Hello friends, I am Vijayan Velibri. All are welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see the special features of railway electrification or the special features of electrified section in railways. Three-fourth of the BG track in India has already been electrified. What are actually the advantages of electric trains over diesel trains? The first advantage that will come to our mind is no smoke, that is no atmospheric pollution, comfortable travel, etc. Fuel cost is also comparatively less. Acceleration of engine is quicker. Cost of loco is about 20% less. These are the benefits of having electric loco. Running electric engine needs continuous supply of electricity. This is achieved through overhead line. This overhead line runs throughout in the electrified section. The loco draws power from this live wire through the equipment called pantograph. Every loco will have two pantographs, one each on either ends. While the engine is on the move, normally rear pando will be raised and will draw electricity from the overhead line. The pando is raised by loco pilots from engine with 6 kg pressure applied from a baby compressor. The inner distance between two pandos of the engine is 10.5 meters. Why rear pando is used for working the engine? Suppose the engine accidentally enters an unwired section, that is where there is no OHG. LP will get at least a few seconds to stop the train. If the engine is worked on rear pando, if an electric loco enters an unwired track, the pando will go up suddenly Panda will get damaged. Sudden drop of power will damage the engine also. The shape of rear Panda is such that it can sweep away obstructions on the line if any. If the engine is worked on front Panda and gets damaged, there is a likelihood of the rear Panda also getting damaged in the process. These are the actually the advantages of having the loco worked on rear Panda. The contact wire or live wire supplying power to pantographs is maintained above the track by means of tubes, insulators, etc. Altogether, we call it OHG, overhead equipment, which in turn is fixed on the mast. In a one kilometer distance of railway line, there will be around 16 masts. The inner distance between two masts will be normally 75 meters. At curves, we can see more masts. At every kilometer of the track, there will be emergency socket provided on a black and white painted post. LP can plug in the phone and contact railway officials in emergency through this arrangement. The socket will be tested by patrolling man every week. Linemen used to patrol the section twice every week. The overhead line is supplied with 25 kV power or 25,000 volts. Our house is supplied by local electricity board with a power of 230 to 250 watts. That itself is fatal for us. The railway overhead line is 100 times powerful than our household supply. So, everybody must keep a safe distance of 2 meters away from the live OHC wire. At level crossings, at a electrified section, the clearance height for road vehicle is 4.67 meters from floor level. Height gauge will be provided at such a level crossing. Railway is getting electric supply for running trains from SEBs, that is state electricity boards. Their HD power supply will be three phase 110 kV. Railway has constructed substations at specific locations to step down this 110 kV to 25 kV. Normally, a substation can power a length of 30 to 40 kilometers of line. At stations, Appendix G of the station working rules deals with the 25 kV traction pertaining to that particular station. In the Appendix G of the station working rule, we can see this 25 kV working rule diagram. Here this is the rule diagram schematically represented. This is not actually the track, it is the overhead line and even crossovers will also be having the OHG line. So this station we can say it is station B. This is the 25 kV working rule diagram. This will be available as I told you in the appendix G and also this will be exhibited at the 
Station Master's office on the wall. And also you can see that these lines are given different colors. Before going into the details of this diagram, we will see how this OHG is controlled in a division. In the case of trains, we can see there is a section controller sitting at the divisional office and he will be giving instructions to the station masters and he will be having overall charge of a particular length of the section. Such controllers will be there, 4 or 5 or 6 controllers will be there controlling the entire train movement of the division. In the same way, here there will be traction power controller traction power controller sitting at the headquarters sitting at the divisional office and he will be having overall control over the OHC of the division he will be having remote control so that at any section he if he wants he can shut the power this TPC can switch off the power of any section of this division at any time he can switch off the power of a particular section. So TPC is having overall control over the traction. There will be several works to be undertaken regarding this overhead line. There will be repair works, there will be replacement works, all these works will be there and sometimes uh, engineering work will be there. A crane is to be worked near a OIC line. For undertaking all these works, the power is to be switched off the OHG line is to be switched off here and there. In consultation with the divisional operations manager, TPC will chalk out a weekly program of work. So this weekly program will be sent to all OHG staff at important stations. And here, suppose at this station we are having OHG staff and in the program, out of the weekly program, he is having a program of work between this section towards this up direction here is the up line towards the up direction he has to undertake some work so that is a programmed work it is already programmed by tpc in consultation with the dom and it is sent to the oh staff at the station when they are having sufficient staff and all arrangements are ready they will seek power block that is the work is between here that is station b and here there will be station C. So in between station B and C there is a work in the up line. So they will seek power block. Power block means the power will be shut down. The OHG will be switched off for a particular period. So this section they want power block means the OHG of this section will be switched off for a particular period for one hour or two hours. According to the nature of the work, they will seek this power block. The downline movement will not be affected and also the movement up to the station will not be affected. So they have to switch off the power between this station B and C only. Now let us see how this programmed power block is executed. Now you can see in this diagram, here the, this is a switch and this is called isolator in the station we can see such isol isolator means by operation of this isolator the power will be cut between these two however this line will be having to from here power will be there from here the power will be there but we are just cutting the OHG wire temporarily cutting means switching off as in the case of a switch, switch what happens in a normal switch the connection is just temporarily cut. So in the same way here the connection between the continuation of this line is cut using isolator. So this is the isolator and uh, when this isolator handle is just pulled down this isolator will go like this. In the top the connection will be broken. You will see the details of this isolator later. So such isolator will be there at the station. Here is one isolator, another one is here, another one here, another one here, another one here, and here and here. So so much isolators are there. And here if he wants a work to be undertaken, the 
line is to be shut down from this isolator towards this direction there will be an isolator or a switching post will be there not, not only the isolator there will be switching post will be there there will be SSP subsection post will be there and up to that subsection post power block will be given we will see how this power block is executed OHG staff wants power block and they will contact the TPC and they will request this power block between this isolator to towards the subsection post on that direction towards the station direction towards C the section between this isolator to the next isolator towards this direction towards the up line or switching post where the line can be switched off that section is called elementary section so this elementary section power is to be shut down so this elementary section is named as 22600 in the 25 kv working rule diagram you can see this in the round the number will be given that number is the number of elementary section so here 22600 that elementary section the power is to be switched off that is what the OHG will request to TPC now what TPC will do the TPC will approach the section controller in the same office section controller will be there in the same office so TPC will approach the section controller and he will inform that I am going to switch off power between station B and station C in up line from isolator so and so to so and so switching post that is elementary section 22600 from so and so time so this information will be given by TPC to section controller and this information is passed to section controller under form ETR1 ETR1 form is used by TPC to section controller on getting this information section controller will call the station master B and the station master C St section controller will communicate this message to the station master supported by a private number now on getting this message what the station master will do the station master must ensure that there is no electric train already available in the elementary section 22600 because here he is going to give power block so it must be ensured that there is no electric train available here so if at all there is a train working from this station towards station C he must ensure that it has cleared the section other precautions he has to take is that till the power block is lifted no electric train should enter this section so he must take the precautions for it that is here there is a starter signal here there is an advanced starter signal controlling the movement of the trains into the section knobs controlling the starter and also this advanced starter should be provided with a power block cap a power block cap should be placed on the knobs so that it will not be operated inadvertently not only that here this point this point is also can lead a train into this section so this point should be kept normal and on that point a power block collar should be placed so that this point will not be operated so here also this point this point is also in the reverse condition a movement can be given towards this direction so to prevent that this point should also be put in the normal position and then a power block cap should be placed on it now in that in such a situation there is no chance of a movement to be given to this direction inadvertently so these precautions should be taken by the station master then the message received from section controller should be recorded in the power block register this power block register in the station and all these entries should be made in reading in tsr also the entries must be made in reading thereafter after taking these precautions the station master can acknowledge the message from section controller supported by a PN. Now, uh, TPC has already given a message to section controller based on which section controller contacted the station master and given all these instructions. 
and after getting the acknowledgement from station master supported by a pn section controller will acknowledge the message from tpc that will also be in etr1 so the transaction between tpc and section controller will be always in etr1 all the messages between section controller and tpc tpc and oh staff section controller and station master will be supported by pn now what the tpc can very well enforce the power block in 22600 elementary section so tpc will call oh staff and he will give the message to the effect that he can undertake the work he has switched off the power in the section and this message will be supported by a pn now what the oh staff has to do now they will undertake the work before taking up the work they will earth this section also here this oh line it is dead now there is no power it is a dead section dead line still this dead line will be earthed by the oh staff because if there happens to be any what is called a small wire getting uh, crossed and uh, getting touch each other there's a chance of getting shock and also if there is any uh, high tension wire going above this track sometimes the electricity board line 110 kv etc line will be going above this track in that case there is a chance of getting induction into this oh dead oh so then also they will, they will get a shock so in order to prevent that to be safe oh line will be earthed using earth pole they will do it now they will undertake the work after the work is over this oh staff will contact tpc and inform that they have completed the work see previously when the tpc had given permission to oh staff to undertake the work that power block has been granted that message was given to oh staff under form etr2 now when the work is over the oh staff will reply or the oh staff will give the message to tpc in etr2 itself that means the communication between tpc and oh staff will be always in form etr2 now oh staff has given message to the tpc that the work has been completed under exchange of pn and now tpc can energize this section he can switch on this power now tpc will switch on the power after switching on the power after energizing this section tpc will inform section controller that the power block has been lifted and the section is energized section controller on his part he will inform the station master that he can to the Uh, he can send electric trains now the power block has been lifted etc and this message will be supported by a pn the acknowledgement from station master will also be supported by a pn and this entries will be recorded in the power block register in reading there after the station master will remove the power block collars he has already placed power block collars on this uh, starter knob advanced the starter knob this point knob and also this point knob all these power block collars will be removed so here the very important thing is that whenever this power block is there all the signals and points which are likely to lead a train an electric train into the section should be placed with the power block collars that is very important when the power block is there if a diesel engine is to be started towards this or diesel train is to be started towards this direction in that case sm can start the train with the caution order stating that already power block has been given and the staff will be working at the soins location so be careful so that caution order will be given to the gdr and the train can be started towards this direction during power block sometimes the oh staff avoiding this power block they will have to use tower wagon or ladder trolley along with it in that case it will become a line block also because 
when the power block is there we cannot send electric trains when they are working with the tower wagon we cannot send the diesel trains also so in that case it will become a line block so no trains can be sent into the section till this power block is lifted so in such a case a message will be given to the station master in, in such a way that tower wagon or ladder trolley has to work in the section so that much about the programmed power block okay friends we will stop this video here and uh, the next video on this railway electrification or the electrified section we will see the emergency power block local power block and the permit to work isolators neutral section etc okay we will see in our next video okay